So I'm pretty sure you've come across a variation of this code at uh, one point or another when working with data types. What this does is simply define a data type, right? A struct. Here we have a point that has two fields, X and Y as a double, simple enough. But the focus of this video is not actually on the struct uh, keyword, but on type def, right? So what is it and what does it do in this situation and how can we understand what's going on? First, if we take a look at the definition of it, what it says that it, you can basically give other names to a data type. So simply speaking, you could actually just define your own uh, name for a certain data, data type. For example, if you want to have an unsigned 64-bit integer, you would have to type a pretty long string that says unsigned long long. With typedef, you can actually change this so that you don't have to type this every single time. So you can say uh, unsigned long long, prefix this with typedef, and at the end of it, just uh, give it a name. For example, let's say uint64, and that's it. Now, what you can do in your code is simply say uint64, let's say l equals a number, let's say 40. And when printing it, so percent llu backslash n, l here, if we run this, you'll notice that we get here 14. So that's that's correct. Basically, what uh, the compiler did for us is um, find this identifier and copy and paste this unsigned long long. So if I say this instead here, it would be the exact same result, right? So simple enough. Now, aside from doing this with existing data types, you can use typedef on uh, user data types, right? User defined data types like this point here. So let's try to use this point. Okay, so let's try, let's say we want to first instantiate here a point, let's say p and we're gonna give it some value. So p.x is, I don't know, 0 0.24 and p.y is uh, 0 0.78, right? And to print them, you would simply do percent, I think it's lf and percent lf and the backslash here. So we're gonna go p.x and p.y. Okay, I forgot a thing there, okay. And if I try to run this, you will notice that we get 0 0.24 and 0 0.78, simple enough. Now, what happens if I simply remove this type def? Because, well, to define a struct, all you need to do is use the struct keyword and say struct point without even the second one. So what if I remove these both uh, keywords here? So like this, what's gonna happen if I try to run this? Oh, see the compiler gives me an error at this point where it says, okay, well, we don't know what point is. So that's, that's a bit of a problem, right? What you have to do in this situation is to say, well, struct point because for user defined data in C, you always have to prefix uh, the data type for any variable declaration with struct, right? So if I try to compile this and run this, you'll notice that it now works properly. So that's, that's really cool. So what typedef says is, well, instead of saying struct point every single time, how about you do how about you say type def struct point point? What does that even mean? Well, it means that you go ahead and take this struct point of yours and replace it with point so that you can just use point instead of struct point. It's quite unnecessary to say struct here because you already know that point is your user defined data. In most cases, you would actually prefix this with some uh, prefix for all the data types you're defining. So you know that it's yours, right? And you don't have to really say struct in this case. You don't have to know that, oh, this is actually a user defined data type. So this is what you're basically doing with that type def. You're saying, okay, so alias this struct point with the word point. So now you can just simply use point in this case. And if I try to run and run this, 
you'll notice that we get uh, the same result. So this has done the same thing as just saying type def struct point and then at the end here point. It's just that you are also defining the struct while you're also renaming. So it just says, okay, well, type def this whole thing, which is basically this into a point. Okay. So I hope that's understandable. And that's, that's how you are actually using type def every time you define your own structure. One more thing before stopping the video and you going ahead and starting to define all these you in 64, you in 32 and you in 16 or what, or what other variations of these are. Uh, take note that there's also a uh, library called std int that uh, defines all these for you. So if you just include this and uh, use int, for example, int 64 underscore t in our case, you could do something like like this instead. So go here and set instead of u int 64, you go u int 64 underscore t and that would result in the same uh, in the same thing being printed down right so um the standard library also comes with some uh, predefined uh, aliases for all these long uh, type dev declarations all right so i hope this was useful thank you for watching and uh, see you next time